Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite fields, subfields, whatever. A very biased collection as usual. Today I would like to talk about what I usually call modern geometry. Um, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but there is this old story, and kind of going to try to tell you anyway, uh, that there is algebraic geometry which started 1850-ish if you want, so there was a huge group of uh, Italian mathematicians who kind of did a lot of kind of basic algebraic geometry as you would learn it nowadays in, in a class on algebraic geometry. Certainly it was polished later on. But a lot of things already originated there that it was like polished around the time of Hilbert maybe. And eventually there is this what people call modern algebraic geometry in the style of uh, Grotendieken and Co. Um, which is not really modern anymore because it was the 1950s. So that's about 100 years ago. Uh, if you watch this video in 2024, and I can't, I can't do any calculations. Um, anyway, and then as right, geometry is still evolving, evolving and evolving. And one of its really modern branches is uh, tropical geometry, although it sometimes it's also not modern anymore because it's fairly old. Uh, anyway, anyway, um, it's kind of a fun story, and I'm trying to uh, motivate where it comes from. And it's a bit strange, usually, where the word, tro the word tropical is, by the way, fantastic. So if I tell someone I'm studying tropical geometry, then they all get to totally excited and want to know what it is. So that's a good way to sell what you're doing, um, even though it might not be exciting or, or whatever, but the, word, the naming here, the name is really brilliant. Um, I, don't, I don't think anyone really uh, thought about that, but it kind of came from someone was doing math in Brazil and it's called as tropical, something like that. Uh, so it's a little bit strange. So the word tropical essentially doesn't mean anything. And I would like to really see it just as a, well, it is a good flashy name, right? So tropical geometry, forget the tropical, it's flashy, uh, everyone likes flashy names. Anyway, so the classical field um, I was starting or I'm going to start with is algebraic geometry. And algebraic geometry studies those guys here as zero sets of polynomials. So the most famous example is probably x squared plus y squared minus 1 equals 0, what are the solutions to this equation? The solution to this equation is like the circle, right? So that's what it is. So the algebraic geometry studies zero sets of polynomials in many different ways. Uh, you might not even recognize anymore that you're studying zero sets of polynomials, but but you do. And kind of the, the kind of crucial thing here is that you usually have really multiple variables, like in my example here, uh, the, like two variables in this case, which makes it really, really difficult. So one variable things, yeah, maybe that, that, that's kind of fine. But in two variable things, you get quite a really beautiful uh, type of zero sets, like this one or whatever. Lines, hyperbolas, parabolas, something like that. So, and yeah, algebraic geometry has been a really crucial field of, of mathematics, and not just mathematics, can be applied literally everywhere. And the reason is pretty simple, like polynomials are just, polynomials are just polynomials, yeah? So um, polynomials are everywhere, so algebraic geometry is somewhat a, a very per persuasive field uh, of mathematics, but it turns out to be like quite difficult. So um, to get into it nowadays, it's pretty tough. Um, to really say something new is like also really tough. It's a highly studied field, so that's why uh, most of the gold is not uh, close to the surface level anymore. Most of the gold is like very, very deep. <laughs> you need to dig very very deep to get some good results here but anyway so that's not maybe not the point but maybe the, the really the catch here is that it also gets technically quite involved so people were always thinking about how to kind of simplify algebraic geometry because it is just useful but it's somehow too difficult in, in some other sense right it's kind of a really difficult thing uh to study and Kind of the idea I would like to sell, which is maybe not the standard, well, it's pretty standard, but it, usually it's kind of explained slightly differently if you think about tropical geometry. But what I would like to sell is this idea of a piecewise linear instead of a polynomial. So the easiest type of polynomial you can imagine is a line, right? A linear map, something like this. Here's another line, something like this. And then it was generalized by making it curvier, so higher degree polynomials are a little bit curvy or something like this, uh, whatever, whatever, I, I, I can't really draw polynomials, but anyway, they're, they're like smoother, curvier, so it gets them more difficult. So the, this is kind of the generalization algebraic geometry you take, so you take the, the linear things, which is like a linear algebra, and you make it, well, curvier. 
But you could do something different. You can just say, say, okay, I stay in the linear world, and then, then you're doing linear algebra. Well, maybe instead of doing linear algebra, um, that's a bit boring. Uh, it's not boring, clearly, but it's not the field you're going to study because a linear algebra is already somehow linear algebra, right? Everyone likes linear algebra. But you can make it more exciting by doing piecewise linear stuff. Um, something like this. And then you are doing piecewise linear algebra if you want. Piecewise linear algebra, and that's more exciting, much more exciting than linear algebra. So the picture I have in mind, so here are some examples of piecewise linear maps uh, in a well plot in three space and in a contour plot. Hope those pictures make some sense. These are not linear, they're piecewise linear maps, right? Like look like a little bouquet of a flower or something. Um, yeah, and the point about piecewise linear for me is that if you have any any function, whatever it is, you can always approximate it using piecewise linear functions. And you can't do that with, you can do that with polynomials as well. So you can do that in algebraic geometry. And you can do that uh, in tropical geometry because tropical geometry will be like about piecewise linear if you want. But you can't do that in linear algebra. So uh, a line is not good enough to approximate a function. A line is good enough to approximate a function at a point that is called a derivative, but not in general. So, but piecewise linear or polynomials are good enough to do that. So I, I feel like these are kind of two legal generalizations of linear algebra. And in my story today, algebraic geometry, as I said, takes the kind of the step of making things smoother, making higher degree polynomials, and um, tropical geometry makes things piecewise linear. So that's essentially what it is, and you will then see pictures of this type. So pictures of this type, which is now the replacement for pictures of those types. I will explain it very, very briefly at the end. But for now, just in other right, and sorry, in tropical geometry, you study those piecewise linear things that look like cells, if you want, some kind of cell type of picture. So tropical geometry is algebraic geometry with piecewise linear, and then polynomials and quotation marks because about piecewise linear, you know. Um, and the key people usually use is to kind of change fields and then the correct, the, the, the usual definition of a polynomial, which I will pull up uh, later, is gives you then a piecewise linear map. And the change of fields, um, I should, probably shouldn't call it a field, it's usually called a semi-ring. Let's call it a field. The field you use in, well, in algebraic geometry, so in algebraic geometry, you usually use something like, the let's say, the complex numbers, some field field, huh? some field field, something that is really a field, in tropical geometry, you usually use what is called the tropical line. So something like R with infinity or some, something like that, um, where addition is taking the minimum and uh, multiplication is addition. <laughs> That's kind of a little bit strange. So if you would take, for example, uh, 5 plus 3, then this is 3. It's kind of a little bit of a strange operation. Taking the minimum, if you take 5 times 3, then this is, as every, everyone knows, this is 8. So you can confuse people a lot with this, because multiplication is just addition. Um, anyway, and it gets much easier somewhat, because, well, multiplication is just addition, and addition is even simpler, it's just taking the max. And if you work over that field, you get the piecewise fields in quotation marks, you get those piecewise linear uh, things that show up in tropical geometry. And the thing to observe, I say it again, is that this, these operations are somewhat easier than the original operations, right here, multiplication is addition, and addition is clearly easier than multiplication. That sounds like a little bit messed up. Classical multiplication is easier, uh, harder than classical addition, and here, tropical multiplication is classical addition. Yeah? So there you go. So it should get a little bit easier, and indeed it gets easier. So, and essentially what you would do in tropical geometry which is not quite true but was true for a long time there was this kind of uh, idea that every algebraic geometry statement should have a tropical analog for example the tropical bizu theorem the bizu theorem is essentially just saying okay uh, if you have something of degree one like a line and you have something of degree two like a circle then they should in intersect in two times one point so taking the product of the degrees, so in two points, generically, and they do. So that's a Bezu theorem, and it holds for any any degree, right? So, 
um, just in this case, and an ellipse, for example, like in this picture, a circle would intersect the line in two points. And this is also true in tropical geometry, where the tropical line is this type of shape, piecewise linear, um, and the tropical, well, quadratic is the red thing, which I'm not trying to draw anymore because it's uh, too complicated to draw. It's not complicated, but no, we'll get it. I'm not going to draw it, you can see it anyway. And this is how algebraic geometry kind of mimics uh, tropical geometry, the other way around. Tropical geometry mimics algebraic geometry. And that, that's kind of the beginning of as tropical geometry. You kind of study type of different questions. They're more related to combinatorics because you have those cell complex type objects. They look like cells. Um, anyway, but really the main selling point of tropical geometry nowadays is that you can actually use it, this easier version of geometry. Keep in mind, multiplication is just classical addition. This easier version of geometry to prove theorems in the difficult field as right geometry and you have many applications to many, many different uh, fields. And let's just to wrap up, just to tell you a little bit about the tropical details here. Um, you could define a polynomial exactly in the usual way you would define a polynomial. You just have now tropical addition and tropical multiplication defining a polynomial. And you would define the zeros of the polynomial in this slightly strange way of uh, saying, okay, the zeros are those where the minimum is achieved twice. Okay, fine. And you get those little pictures, a line, a uh, quadratic, uh, cubic, or whatever the fourth thing is, right? Tropical line, classical line. And tropical geometry then turns out to be kind of, a, as I said, easier than classical geometry. And you have to back and forth between them so you can prove theorems in one world using ideas from the other. And that's uh, kind of really amazing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.